The whodunit line of detective fiction has been historically seldom trodden ground in the world of manga and anime. Aside from the odd hidden gem such as Nisho Ishin's Zare Goto decapitation cycle, which can only be found by wandering into the murky recesses of obscurity, you'd be hard-pressed to come up with a solid detective series of the variety that begs to be experienced through the lens of industrious deduction, imploring its audience to flex those mental muscles in a good old-fashioned role-playing session of armchair homicide detective. The long-running detective Conan is probably the supreme king of whodunit detective manga, as it's still chugging along as consistently as ever since its debut in 1994, with its anime counterpart following suit since 1996. But while Conan has managed to carve out a not insignificant overseas fan base under the localized name of Case Closed, it's a little known fact that a sort of sister series to Conan has been lurking quietly in its shadow the entire time. A series by the name of Kindaichi Shonen Jikenbo, which translates to the Kindaichi Case Files. And since the series, a more than worthy alternative to the venerable Conan, is sorely lacking in both visibility and love outside of Japan, this video's goal is to correct that. Predating Detective Conan by two years in 1992, the Kindaichi Case Files began serialization in Weekly Shonen Jump. It was written by Seimaru Amagi and Yozaburo Kanari, with illustrations by Fumiya Sato. In the early days of the franchise, Kanari took charge of devising the scenarios, with Amagi handling the plotting out of all the technical minutia. In other words, all the clever tricks, traps, and mind games employed by the myriad of criminals. In developing Kindaichi case files, Amagi and Sato would form an enduring collaborative partnership, churning out Detective School Q in the early 2000s, heavily inspired by their time together on the Kindaichi series. Kindaichi Case Files was immensely popular around the time of its inception, managing to score the Kodansha Manga Award in 1995. Between Kindaichi and Conan, one could easily point to the late 90s as the definitive heyday for detective manga. As noted earlier, the popularity of Kindaichi has waned over recent years. However, the series still retains a robust and respectable pedigree as one of the best-selling manga of all time, with over 100 million copies sold. As for how Kindaichi Case Files came to be, its chief inspiration is right there in the name, a series of detective stories starring Kosuke Kindaichi, which kicked off with the inscrutably complex The Honjin Murders in 1946, a perennial classic of Japanese detective fiction featuring one of the most famous locked room murders of all time. The Kosuke Kindaichi line of novels was penned by Seishi Yokomizo, one of Japan's most prolific and esteemed mystery novelists. Conceptually, Kindaichi Case Files is conventional, young detective fiction fare, very much in the vein of Nancy Drew or The Hardy Boys, with a healthy sprinkling of Scooby-Doo-esque occult and supernatural horror mixed in. The series is ostensibly a light investigative procedural, the star of which is our titular hero, amateur high school sleuth Hajime Kindaichi, who claims to be the grandchild of Yoko Mizo's Kosuke Kindaichi, a reference which is later retroactively removed due to a copyright dispute. Befitting of his purported heritage, Hajime Kindaichi's deductive instincts are unrivaled. He is an immensely talented wunderkind who excels at piecing together the truth from a nefarious web of deception and red herrings, a skill which grants him a considerable degree of respect and admiration from local law enforcement. Which comes in handy considering how Hajime's entire adolescence seemingly revolves around how he reluctantly and inadvertently gets dragged into a series of labyrinthine homicide puzzles on a routine basis. Throughout his investigative trials, Hajime is accompanied by his childhood best friend, classmate, and unsubtle mutual love interest, Miyuki Nanase, the hard-headed, occasionally brutish, but ultimately good-hearted homicide inspector Isamu Kenmochi, and Inspector Kenmochi's supervisor, the charming, genius detective Kengo Akechi, Hajime's unofficial rival, named, of course, after Kogoro Akechi from the works of Edogawa Rampa. The series does feature a number of more minor recurring characters, such as Hajime's celebrity crush, pop idol Reika Hayami, or his cousin, Fumi, who recur primarily as allies, but also occasionally as victims. Naturally, rounding out the recurring cast is a small stable of villains, the most prominent of which is Hajime's arch-nemesis, the Professor Moriarty to his Sherlock Holmes, Yoichi Takoto. Initially introduced as an unassuming, easily flustered magician, Takato reveals himself to be a merciless, cunning, and untouchable criminal mastermind whose penchant for architecting and orchestrating one brutal homicide after another looms over the entirety of the narrative. 
Takato is a cold-blooded serial master manipulator who, while entirely unopposed to carrying out murders firsthand, finds his true calling to be pulling the strings from the shadows, methodically guiding and goading others to stain their souls with the sin of murder. Each of the series' cases is an entirely self-contained vignette, with the only continuity between stories being the aforementioned central cast of characters. What this means is that, barring a few pole position cases where major events occur, such as the introduction of one of these recurring characters, each of Kindaichi's stories can essentially be enjoyed in any order. Each case kicks off on very similar footing, usually with Hajime and Miyuki getting whisked away on some manner of trip or excursion alongside an ensemble of friends and or complete strangers, whereupon the entire crew finds themselves stranded or trapped in a remote location. After some time passes, a body inevitably turns up, and almost always in an utterly baffling and incomprehensible manner, such as by way of a classic locked room or in a situation where everyone holds a seemingly airtight alibi. The bodies then continue to pile up until Hajime is finally able to piece together all the clues and evidence, whereupon he dramatically proclaims, all mysteries have now been solved. The finale is always a roundtable, with Hajime gathering the remaining survivors and cornering and checkmating the culprit with theatrical aplomb, causing their motivations and checkered backstories to come gushing forth for all to see. What sets Kim Daiichi case files apart from your routine detective series, however, is a combination of two defining elements. Number one, the shockingly intricate and challenging setups behind each crime, ranking as some of the most technical and diabolically convoluted to ever grace fair play whodunits. Even the most straightforward murders are typically founded upon some wickedly clever deception, from MacGyvering elaborate automated winches out of completely mundane objects, to deftly manipulating the surrounding architecture to create mind-bending perspective tricks, to leveraging esoteric scientific and engineering concepts such as the chemical and physical properties of the elements of the periodic table, to literally everything in between. For those who savor a satisfying brain teaser, who are keen on playing detective right alongside Hajime and the characters, you will absolutely not walk away disappointed. And number two, the emphasis on sympathetic murderers. Rarely is one of Kindaichi's culprits seeking monetary gain, notoriety, or looking to make some sort of warped ideological point. Instead, they are after a sense of personal closure to tame the deeply buried trauma in their souls by carrying out vengeance against those who had wronged them. The victims, in contrast, are generally portrayed as perfectly normal and upstanding at the outset, maybe hiding one or two skeleton bones in their closets, but are eventually revealed to be horrific, irredeemable monsters in their own right, oftentimes completely eclipsing the vileness of the culprit's crime, making the intentions of said culprit come off as arguably noble. Still, the atrocity committed by the culprit is never portrayed in a way that glorifies murder, and the vast majority of the cases end on a downer note with the culprit acknowledging the impermanence and hollowness of their victory, how nothing can undo what has been done in the past, and that their actions have caused the road to recovery to stretch out interminably before them. As mentioned, Kindaichi Case Files began life as a manga, whose publication kicked off in 1992, running in weekly Shonen Jump until 2013, at which point it was rebranded as Kindaichi Case Files R. From there, Case Files R would run until 2017 when it switched over to the bi-weekly seinen magazine, Evening, once again rebranded, this time as 37-year-old Kindaichi, taking place 20 years in the future. As of 2022, this latest iteration is still published regularly in Evening. As far as exposure in the Western manga scene, the original Kindaichi Case Files was successfully picked up by Tokyopop for an English release, spanning a small handful of volumes between 2003 and 2008. At this point in time, they have naturally long since run their course in terms of circulation, though the more persistent and determined among us may still be able to snatch lingering physical copies from secondhand sources. An anime adaptation that was produced by Toei Animation aired in 1997 and ran for 148 episodes over three years. This initial run of Kindaichi was accompanied over the years by a handful of OVAs and specials, in addition to two animated movies. Despite its lengthy time on the television airwaves and the popularity of its source material domestically, Kindaichi never garnered enough traction outside of Japan to be adapted for Western audiences, thus there exist no legal options for watching it, though fan subs do exist. After a lengthy dry spell, Toei would eventually release two more seasons of Kindaichi Case Files in 2014 and 2015, this time covering Case Files R, adapting some of the more recent stories that had been penned in the 14-year hiatus. 
The two new seasons, titled Kindaichi Case Files R, would notably be simulcast for English-speaking audiences via Crunchyroll, making them the only adaptations outside of the manga to see an official Western release. And on the live-action side of things, five television dramas were aired between 1995 and 2022. As mentioned previously, only a small portion of the manga was licensed by Tokyopop, and those volumes have long since been out of print. Because of this, though you would have to rely on fan subs, the original Kindaichi Case Files anime series makes for the most readily available starting point. At the time of this recording, except for the final handful of episodes, every one of the 148 episodes sports an English fan translation. Much like cracking open a book from the golden age of detective fiction in the present day, the mysteries and cases explored in the Kindaichi Case Files anime all hold up quite nicely, and as they are all in the form of four or five episode stories, they are quite easy to chew through in rapid succession. From there, you can hop straight to both seasons of New Kindaichi Case Files R. New Case Files is really just more of the same, classic Kindaichi with a modern facelift. And though most agree it's a step down or two from the original, after 140-odd episodes, there's little reason not to simply polish off the remainder of the animated Kindaichi content. To conclude this video, as a teaser, I'll end with a few standout stories from Kindaichi's lengthy history. The Murders of Fudo High School's Seven Mysteries There's an urban legend floating around Fudo High School that seven murders took place once upon a time in the school's sordid history. The president of the school's Mystery Research Club calls upon resident genius student detective Hajime Kindaichi to solve the myth's final riddle, the mysterious murder of the hanged girl. However, the stakes are raised tremendously when the president is killed and her body is discovered, disturbingly arranged in the exact same manner as the unsolved seventh mystery. The Murders of the Gentleman Thief Hajime joins Inspector Ken Mochi in cornering the self-proclaimed Phantom Art Thief, laying a trap at the abode of a renowned artist who is the thief's next intended target. Despite their best efforts, the thief strikes, swiping a valuable painting and leaving a calling card directly challenging Hajime to a battle of wits. As Hajime steps up to the plate, he finds that this showy and elaborate art gallery fleecing is more than meets the eye, as the disappearance of paintings quickly turns into a string of seemingly unrelated murders. It's up to Hajime to catch the phantom thief in the act and determine the connection between these two rapidly escalating crime sprees. The Murders of Hida's House of Tricks Inspector Kenmochi receives a letter from his childhood friend, who has moved to a traditional Japanese village tucked away deep in the mountains after marrying into one of the village's wealthy families. Upon her husband's death, an ongoing dispute has broken out over the rightful heir to the family fortune, and the letter reveals that she has been receiving death threats from the mysterious Cursed Warrior. Hajime and Miyuki travel with Kenmochi to the village, where they find themselves under constant siege from the warrior himself, and must survive the onslaught while unraveling a series of baffling, unnerving mysteries, such as how a corpse came to suddenly appear in a locked room with its head missing and nowhere to be found. Kindaichi the Murderer A best-selling non-fiction crime novelist throws what he dubs a mystery gala, inviting all those in attendance to crack his secret code. In doing so, the dark secrets of someone present at the gala will be revealed, but the winner will also be granted the publication rights for the author's latest work. Suspicious, Hajime pays a visit to the novelist, but soon discovers that he has been murdered and becomes the prime suspect when he's spotted with the weapon that claimed his life. Hajime, now facing pursuit by the very comrades he relies upon on a regular basis, must clear his name by uncovering the truth behind the murder. A feat which becomes ever more challenging as the body count continues to rise and the culprit seems hell-bent on pinning each subsequent murder squarely on him. The Murders of the Magical Express Hajime, Miyuki, and Inspector Kenmochi board a train for Hokkaido after the police receive a sinister letter from the Puppeteer from Hell. Aboard the train, they are accompanied by members of the Fantasy Magic Troupe, whose leader winds up murdered after a bomb scare from the puppeteer. The body then suddenly vanishes from its resting place, leaving no trace. Once the train reaches its final destination, the troop leader's corpse mysteriously resurfaces before them at a local hotel, arranged like a marionette, in a way that suggests that it had been placed there well ahead of the arrival of the train. The gauntlet is thrown to Hajime to see through the culprit's fiendish trick, 
a trick so impossible that only the hands of a master illusionist, such as those who comprise the illustrious magic troupe, could have pulled it off. The Reika Hayami Kidnapping Murder Case Following a film shoot, celebrity pop sensation Reika Hayami and her manager are kidnapped with a ransom demand on their heads, explicitly calling for Hajime Kindaichi to be the one to deliver the ransom. With Reika's life hanging in the balance, Hajime finds himself led around on a wild goose chase by the kidnapper, scrambling across the city, ransom in hand, desperately attempting to make the drop off in time. The kidnapping suddenly goes south and takes an unexpectedly deadly turn, and with Hajime distracted and out of the picture, the truth behind this layered, convoluted scheme may be lost forever. The Murders of the Computer Lodge While on a ski trip, Hajime and Miyuki find themselves hopelessly lost and stranded, only to stumble upon and take refuge inside a ski lodge. On this snowy winter night, the lodge's residents consist of a club of murder mystery enthusiasts who know each other only by their online chatroom handles, each having borrowed their moniker from a famous detective fiction writer or character, such as Agatha, Rompo, or Watson, in an homage to Yukito Ayatsuji's The Decagon House Murders. And like The Decagon House Murders, the purported deductive prowess of these club members is soon put to the test, as they slowly and mysteriously find themselves getting picked off one by one, the culprit lurking somewhere among them. The Murders of the Russian Dolls a famous mystery novelist passes away, leaving his inheritance in the hands of five possible successors, with his will stating that a competition will be held to determine who will lay claim to the inheritance. One of the successors invites Hajime and Miyuki to observe the competition, but things take a turn for the unexpected when Hajime's arch-nemesis, Yoichi Takuto, is also in attendance. Over the course of the competition, the potential heirs to the inheritance fall victim to the architect of this twisted scheme, the mysterious Conductor whose goal is to have Takato take the fall in his stead as the mastermind. And thus the race is on between Hajime and Takato to see who will unmask the conductor first. <laughs>